you have two chances to join Michael Voris in Canada. The first in Ottawa on May 24th, and the second on May 26th in Toronto, where he'll be speaking about the new evangelization and living your faith with charity and boldness. For all the details, just click on either of the links in the description. Obama and Holder drop DOMA defense. Arizona axes the mandate for religious employers. And there's a new ordinariate down under. Those stories and more just ahead on Catholic News Roundup. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by PewSitter.com, your online Catholic newspaper for the third millennium. CatholicMediaCoalition.org, in line with the church, online with the world. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Catholic News Roundup. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. DOMA death sentence. Barack Obama is calling for the repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act after his administration has refused to enforce the federal law since February of 2011. You may remember Attorney General Eric Holder said in a statement last year the law defining marriage as between one man and one woman would no longer be enforced by the Justice Department because he says it is unconstitutional. Obama called for the repeal of the law during a fundraiser in New York earlier this week before an audience of homosexual activists, declaring the repeal of the law wouldn't weaken families, but strengthen them. His calling for the repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act earlier this week came as one of several specific goals for his second term, if he is reelected. Arizona annihilates mandate. Arizona has passed a law allowing religious employers to opt out of contraception coverage for their employees. The legislation expands the definition of a religious employer to any organization whose religious beliefs play a significant role in its operations or who have, quote, religious motivations in their articles of incorporation. State Governor Jan Brewer signed the measure saying she hopes it will set an example for other states to preserve the religious freedoms to which we are all constitutionally entitled. The law is, of course, being labeled as an attack on women by its critics and unfortunately will not supersede federal law if Obama's contraception mandate is allowed to stand. Sterilization and addiction. It appears the group Project Prevention cares little for life and even less for the future of mankind. The group is paying female drug addicts a minuscule $300 for subjecting themselves to a sterilization procedure. If that wasn't enough, Project Prevention's media campaign is citing slogans such as, quote, don't let a pregnancy ruin your drug habit, and she has her daddy's eyes and her mommy's heroin addiction, end quote. The founder, of Barbara, the founder, Barbara Harris, launched Project Prevention after adopting four children from a crack addict, obviously believing that these children are better left uncreated. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by NewOxfordReview.org, the voice of Catholic Orthodoxy, in print and on the web. And RenewAmerica.com, expanding the influence of America's grassroots in the cause of freedom. Disappointed by Georgetown, the Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Washington is calling Georgetown's decision to invite Kathleen Sebelius a disappointment, but not a surprise. After lamenting Georgetown's secularization, Nestout says, quote, Georgetown's choice of the architect of the radical challenge of such freedom for special recognition can only be seen as a statement of where the university stands, certainly not with the Catholic bishops, end quote. As we previously reported, Georgetown was reprimanded for inviting Sibelius, the creator of Obama's so Obamacare's so-called contraception mandate, and the university removed her name from the agenda list, even though she is still slated to speak. Joining up down under, a structure has been put in place by Pope Benedict to welcome Anglicans desiring to join the Catholic Church in Australia. The new ordinariate, as it's called, works like a diocese but covers the entire country. The community launches June 15th and will be called the Ordinariate of Our Lady of the Southern Cross under the patronage of St. Augustine of Canterbury. While embracing full communion with Rome, they will still be able to keep some of their liturgical traditions and customs similar to ordinariates established in England and the United States. 
I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for your daily dose of Catholic News Roundup right here on RealCatholicTV.com. And also be sure to check out The Vortex, where Michael talks about the truth of the Eucharist in Catholic teaching. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. And as always, God bless you. If you think The Vortex helps you get things in focus, try becoming a premium member on RealCatholicTV.com for the best shows on earth. The benefits are out of this world.